course, can just be one of the happiest, most happiest times of a mother's life, but it can also be one of the most difficult. Postpartum depression affects hundreds of thousands of women here in the United States and across the world. And now, for the first time, there is hope. The FDA has just approved a new drug to treat postpartum depression. And you guys may not have known this, but Phoenix was one of the trial cities mm -hmm. for this drug. We're just learning about all this. So joining us this morning to talk about the new drug as well as what exactly is postpartum. We have Charlotte Best with Women's Health Innovations of Arizona and Laura Vargas, a, a mom of a toddler, mm -hmm. a new parent advocate for the March of Dimes as well because you had a baby in the NICU at just over one pound. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. And suffered postpartum. Mm -hmm. My son was born at 28 weeks. He weighed one pound, three ounces. He wow. was given a 50-50 chance of survival and a 50-50 chance of severe disability. So he was in the NICU for three months. He was on oxygen for six months. He came home on oxygen. Um, and we went through a lot of, um, he had severe uh, developmental delays. So there was kind of incredible trauma in the NICU experience. And so I did suffer postpartum depression and PTSD and struggled with that. And Laura, with all the stress, and as moms, we tend to focus on our kids. Did you recognize mm -hmm. what was going on with you? Did you get help? Um, I did get help, but it, it took a while. I started with insomnia. And so when we were home uh, from the hospital for about a month, I started getting insomnia. And when you're on an incredibly rigid schedule, a three a three hour feeding schedule mm -hmm. for a preemie who's really struggling to eat, um, that was just incredibly devastating to me because I couldn't get any kind of rest. And, and so the insomnia started. And then from there, I started to see the anger and the shame and the guilt mm -hmm. and all of those different feelings that you feel when your pregnancy goes wrong or there is trauma involved. Yeah. Charla, this is normal. This is what some of the symptoms are, right? Well, um, yes and no. I would say it's normal, but it's n normal in the context of how she describes it. NICU mm -hmm. families okay. are actually more risk for developing postpartum yeah. depression, anxiety, or even PTSD, mm -hmm. as she's describing. Um, so it's that kind of constant dialogue about what's normal, what's abnormal, what's normal experiences in motherhood, and what are the things that we recognize as, mm -hmm. it's a little bit erring on the side of abnormalcy, in which case we would need to make sure that moms are adequately screened, yeah. treated, mm -hmm. um, it's specialized care, so we want to make sure that we um, have those conversations mm -hmm. with mom and, and, and making sure that we know who's more at risk versus who's not. So now let's talk about the options. What do we know about this new treatment? Um, you know, I think it's still in such an early stage right now mm -hmm. that what we've known to be true, if it even get to, got to this point and if it's gone through the FDA approval, mm -hmm. um, then we recognize that in and of itself is a big deal, huge, right? Yeah. Then that means that there was a significant problem in the first place. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so now we're having this conversation and while it's at those early stages, like I mentioned, um, it's pretty significant, especially in the maternal mental health field mm -hmm. um, as a provider. And that's exactly what we do at Women's Health Innovations of Arizona and as, as for moms as well, making sure that they receive adequate access to all kinds of care. Mm -hmm. The full screen right now is up so that you can see more about Zolreso. That is the medication it's taken and this is what's pretty surprising. 60 hour IV drip? Wow. That's a long wow. time yeah. that it's you're really sitting there with an yes. IV. And the cost seems excessive as well. It's very excessive, and I think that, and for some moms, that may not make sense, you know, and because it's in the early stages, I think that, you know, kind of weeding out the ones that it makes sense for, but keep in mind that um, perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, which postpartum depression is in that spectrum, um, this is a completely treatable and preventable disorder, right? And so if, if people are accessing drugs or medication or therapy and support all the things that work and what we know to be true that's mm -hmm. helpful and very impactful for families, mm -hmm. um, then they're going to access it in ways whatever way possible, right? And we hope, and but do we know if insurance is going to cover this? Not yet, we, I'm, don't uh, we're, we don't know. Early. It's yeah. just so early yeah. to tell, but I think um, we're just so super excited that, um, again, there's one more resource that moms and families have access mm. to, yeah. and to be perfectly transparent, um, women, mothers, um, and babies are dying from postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a big, yeah. big deal. We've heard it in the and news so and extreme if stories. it yeah. costs, you know what I mean, up to $30,000 or whatever it is, yeah. then is worth that it. worth a life? Laura, Absolutely on that very note, really, really quickly, there are moms right now who are feeding their newborns and they're watching us mm -hmm. right now. What is your message to them? Um, I think, well, um, I know that I, she's got a different message, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm going to let her speak and then I would also like to give a message to moms too, if possible. Sure. 
Um, I just want everyone to know that they're not alone, that they need to speak up, and if they need help, they need to find those resources. And that's where uh, March of Dimes and uh, development mm -hmm. of advocacy for moms and babies is critically important mm -hmm. because our moms need to be healthy. And so in order for them to be healthy, um, they need to have options, they need to have available resources, they need to have awareness. And so the more these treatment options become available, the more people become aware of this issue and the more moms can speak up. And so I want them to speak up and I want them to say, you know, I have a problem, I'm not feeling right in this um, pregnancy I'm not feeling right about um, my life right now mm -hmm. and what and, and help me acknowledgement mm -hmm. is the first step and then Absolutely. reaching out exactly mm -hmm. and I completely agree with her I think that just bringing awareness is so impactful and for us um, I'm a mother as well and all of our staff at Women's Health Innovations have experienced a perinatal mood and anxiety disorder in pregnancy or postpartum so 100% of, um, of us right that we're mm -hmm. also giving back to the families and the moms in our community Community. and so the message that I would send is that yes if screening treatment access to care access to support um, you will absolutely be well if you have all those right things in place and thank you for what you guys do with the women's health innovations in Arizona making those available to the public Laura thank you for sharing your story yeah, uh, we know it's not easy to speak about it but again the message to everybody out there is you guys are not alone that's right we've all been there it's we've hard. all experienced <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. It's really hard it's hard yeah. work thank, thank you, you ladies. Yeah. thank you so much all right still come you looking to make a big move if so you might want to